Hello everybody, my name is Chris Brady, author of the Boeing 737 Tech Guide and the Boeing 737 Tech Site. And this video is about the Boeing 737 Electrical Equipment Bay. So, uh, for contents, we'll be looking at the ENE Bay in general, uh, junction boxes, moisture protection, equipment cooling, batteries, racks, then a, uh, a brief uh, video tour of the ENE Bay, the E6 rack, the auxiliary fuel equipment rack, forward equipment bay and uh, a, a brief look at bite testing. As always please treat your company training and their manuals as the authoritative source of information. Okay on to general. The the e bay um, as as I call it but it's also known as the the EE bay or the aft electronic equipment compartment um, it's it's there as indicated on the the photograph. Uh, it's behind that small squarish hatch, which is behind the nose wheel. It's directly underneath the the, the forward door. There is also a forward equipment bay, um, which is why the regular E and E bay, sometimes called the aft electron equipment, the the forward electron equipment bay, is actually just in front of the the nose wheel much much smaller space that one. If either hatch is open it'll bring on the equipment caption uh, light on the doors panel in the in the flight deck for us. Okay so looking at the the, the side view of the aircraft just just to give you an idea of the the, the size of the in eBay because it, it, it is fairly big. Um, this is a diagram from an AIB report which I'll actually reference later in the in the video. Um, now this shows the location of the, the in eBay for a 737-200 but in actual fact it's the same size for all series. The only difference is that the the rack numbering is different because later models have had to have more racks as there's been more electronics uh, introduced into the aircraft. So that's that's what it looks like inside. Um, the the door, uh, well on the NG and the MAX anyway, it lifts up and into the bay and then slides on, on two pairs of, of racks to the, the right hand side. When I say the right hand side I mean the side away from the air stir, so the starboard side if you like. And you can see the, the, the the two pairs of tracks there on on this photo, and the door have indicated in red where it's it's uh, it's stowed away. On the the classics and the originals, um, they don't have those those tracks. Um, what they've got, and you can just about see it in the photo, one of the rollers underneath the doors. So you, you, you again, you, you, you open the hatch, lift it up, and then push it to the side on those rollers. It's, it's much more awkward to, to open and close. There's also a little hatch release la latch, which I've indicated there, which you, um, you, you have to know where that is. Otherwise, I mean, wh why you would go into this without an engineer, I, d I don't know. And you, you, you know, you, you. you my advice would be don't. Um, but if, if there's an engineer around, ask them. You know, the, you know, tell them you're interested in having a quick look, and they'll they'll show you this. But um, that, if you ever do have to go in there on your own, then you, you can be stuck if you're not aware that there is a hatch release latch to be able to close the uh, the door on the on the classics and the originals. All right, so look, the, this view is is kind of just outside of the E&E bay, looking in. So the, the the hatch is open and off to the right of the the photo, and it's looking up to the ceiling. Um, and what you can see there, apart from well, three lights, but what one of them's out, um, is uh, a lot of flight control cable runs and pulleys, um, w w which are which are mount mounted against the or, or, or close to the ceiling. Um, th there are a huge number of these flight control cables. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly, but it's 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 probably best part of twenty of these, running from the the, the flight deck down the aircraft to um, to to the, the the flight controls, the landing gear, you know, your, your uh, flaps, or all, 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 all kinds of things. Uh, so they've got to go somewhere, and and that's that's where they run. Uh, again, you can see the the door tracks in in green in the foreground of this photo. 
So one of the first things you'll see when you pop your head in is the service panel. Um, it's quite handy for the hatch and the, uh, the main reason for that I guess is that that's where the light switch is. Um, so that's the, that's the button at the top centre there. Uh, you just press that and, the, um, and the, the, there are four lights in the uni but then they'll come on. Other things on that panel up at the top left is the alternate VMO MMO switch for um, that that you you'd have the engineer switch for you if you're conducting a gear down ferry flight. That's only there on the the Max and later build NGs. Uh, hasn't been there for for that long. There's also um, 115 volt 400 uh, hertz AC power outlet. Uh, with the standard sort of American uh, standard socket there. Uh, service interphone jacks so that engineers in the E&E bay can communicate with, the, with those um, in, in the, the, the flight deck or, or, or elsewhere around the aircraft. And there's an electrostatic ground jack um, and that's for use with a wrist strap that you would wear. If I can just show it you here. Um, this is for when you, you it's, it's an anti-static wrist strap. Um, so th this is stored in a pouch up there on the, uh, the E5-2 rack. And the, the instruction from Boeing is that this is to be worn and plugged into uh, to a ground jack before handling any components in the e &E bay to prevent um, damage to the electrics from ac accidental static discharges. You may have come across this at, at, at home. I don't know if, you, if you've ever changed any components in your PC, um, you know, bought a new card or a new hard drive or what have you. Then you know, again, the the, the advice is to is to use one of these uh, grounding wrist straps to, to to stop any static discharges that might have built up on yourself, uh, discharging through the, uh, the, the the printed circuit boards. The service panel on the, the classics uh, and the originals um, looks like this, so it's quite different to the, the one on the, uh, the NG and the Max. Um, for a start, there's no, there's no electric static discharge jack in there. I think uh, th this was all in the days before that was considered to be an issue. Um, but yeah, it's got a light switch and in fact a light on the panel. Um, below that, you've got a flap load limiter test switch and indication light. Um, for, for uh, flap diagnostics. Up on the the top right, there's a um, on the, on the EIS system, the, um, the the engine indication system, the maintenance data bus test connector there, and the the other two larger ones, they're flight control test connectors. The over on the left hand side there's a what's known as a black box extractor tool uh, so it's a, it, it's a standard it's key if you like for, for, for removing the uh, any, any, any of the boxes okay let's have a look at the the junction boxes now um, there are three in the in eBay um, and actually many more around the aircraft mostly in the vicinity of the nose wheel well and these all contain uh, relays for uh, for various AC and DC loads, the one in the photo here is the uh, is the J9 junction box. Uh, it's also known as the battery shield, and in that you've got the uh, the, the battery bus bar, um, the, the various battery relays, and RCCBs, uh, re remote control circuit breakers, for the auxiliary battery and the static inverter. So, um, so all those things are in there. They say the panel's off on this photo, so um, so you can see inside this, and the uh, the relays are over toward the, the the back left of the photo, and there are circuit breakers in there for for, for battery charging and the like. Um, the other one of the other boxes in the e and &E bay is the J thirty nine box. Um, this is only in on SFP aircraft, and that's got an extra seven, uh, I think, auto speed brake relays for for those aircraft. The rest of the the the, the speed brake relays are around the the nose wheel. And the other one you might see, uh, perhaps the most obvious one actually, is this J23 box, a uh, fairly anonymous looking thing. Um, clues in the location. It's right by where the the Airstair door. 
um, it, it, the comp components, extender and track components would be if you've got those fitted on on your your aircraft. Uh, so in inside this is is all the relays for those. Its secondary use is for aircraft with a, either a two-position tail skid or mid-exit doors. Um, because those aircraft, if you remember from previous video, have got the SPSEU and the circuit cards for those are mounted in that uh, hatch that's open in the inset photo there. Um, so there's a hatch for, uh, sorry, a card for both the tail skid and mid-exit door operation in there. Um, also on this particular one, you can see just above that hatch, there's uh, there's another electrostatic ground jack point. So uh, Boeing are obviously getting quite keen on on the use of that now. Talking about the air stairs, I say if you've got them fitted, and many airlines don't, and take out the air stairs and the mechanism uh, just for weight saving. Um, but if you've got them in and, and, and they're, they're serviceable, if you pop your head up in the e bay, you will see this unit here. Um, now that's just the mechanism for the air stairs door, not the actual air stairs itself. Um, and you can see on there you've got a jack screw, motors down at the bottom and uh, limit switches for, for that. The, the air stairs are actually stored um, above this against the ceiling in the e uh, the e bay and underneath the air stairs there's a fiberglass drip pan um, to uh, to protect the equipment racks from any moisture which may have been brought into the compartment with those stairs so if you imagine uh, you know if it's if it's a, a a rainy day there will be quite a lot of moisture brought in as the as the air stairs retract and really this is this is the last place you you, you want moisture and drips on on all these electronic components um, but it has happened so let's talk about uh, moisture protection um, and an incident which um, which happened back in 1995 it, it was to a 737-200 but it, I mean th this is applicable for all generations um, but this particular event the, the, the aircraft experienced uncommanded yaw and roll oscillations during a post heavy maintenance um, check test flight um, and I've had similar events actually where when I've done post heavy maintenance check flights um, you know where, where water has got into electronics and they've been quite alarming events um, but the the report for this is there I've, I've, I've I've got an image of it on the right hand side of the screen and you can you can download this ju just google uh the, the registration and AIB and you'll you'll get the report and it's actually quite a good read um but anyway the, getting back to moisture in ingress the the investigation found that fluid from the the cabin had leaked into the in eBay and onto the uh, the your damper coupler uh and the report stated that the location of the in eBay Beneath the cabin floor, in the in the area of the of the aircraft doors, galleys, and toilets, so so there's all that potential water around, uh, made it vulnerable to fluid in ingress from a variety of sources. Um, so th this isn't even anything to do with the air stairs. This is other water sources because if you remember back to I think the second or third slide, I showed you the location of the in eBay. It's beneath the it's beneath the doors and also in that area you've got the galley, you've got the cabin floor, you, you, you've got the toilets, any of which um, can spill water and uh, could potentially get down into the uh, the and bay. So following that event in, in 1995 the um, and, and the AIB report which highlighted the, the, the issue uh, Boeing uh, formed and launched an e and bay assessment team in, uh, in early 96 to address liquid leakage and contamination uh, from having an adverse effect on aircraft systems. Now as a result of that report this led to improvements in, in both hardware, I, you know, drip trays and, and, and the like, and maintenance practices and it's, it, it's pretty much eliminated the, these events um, so, so that, that was a success. The, the 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 shrouds and you can just about see one. It, it's it's not very easy to see in the photo because it's it's transparent, so so that engineers can you know easily inspect what's going on on the other side of the shroud. Um, 
so to prevent moisture from rain on on the air stairs or, or condensation or leakage from the galley or toilet dripping onto the any electronic equipment we, there are several of these transparent plastic moisture shrouds is is how Boeing call them um, I I call them drip trays um, but whatever they they catch water um, and they've got drains at either end and tubes running down which uh, which discharge that water out into the aircraft drainage system and this is a photo of underneath the aircraft you can just see the E&E bay hatch there behind the nose wheel and I've highlighted three water drainage holes on here there, there are many more around the aircraft um, but these are the ones which which carry the water away from the uh, the in eBay um, and also from the the, the, the drains near the uh, the door sills for doors one and two right uh, sorry um, one one left and right the, the the two forward doors this is a, 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 a probably a better view of the the moisture shrouds and the and the drain tubes and it, it, it shows two uh, two of the shrouds or drip trays there and that you can see now uh, there are there are four drain tubes coming coming down from these um, when the NG was was first produced the, the, there was the in eBay was was actually fairly uh, widespreadly redesigned because there was much more electronics in the in the NG and the the the, the, the racks were redesigned um, and the early NGs and um, we, we are talking very early pre 1999 had a problem with moisture ingress uh, getting onto the ADIRUs which you can see in the photo there they're, they're the the components on the extreme left and right of that rack. Um, so moisture was dripping down onto those. So the the the, the shrouds were, were were redesigned, and again, uh, it was a success, and there, there'd been no further reoccurrences of of this problem since. What you can also see in this photo is down there on the the bottom right hand side are some very large bore uh, black pipes. They are the equipment cooling air ducts. So if we take a look at uh, equipment cooling now in a, in a bit more depth, um, as you probably remember from the the aircon video, if you've if you've watched it that I, I did, some cabin air is used to to cool the E bay, um, and also the forward equipment bay, all of the flight deck panels, display units, uh, the central electric panel, and circuit breaker panels. So anything where there's electronics in the flight deck. Um, and and the 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 two in e bays is cooled by uh, by cooling air from the cabin. From 1986, when the EFIS was introduced on the classics, there was uh, the, the, there's been a separate cooling supply system and a uh, cooling exhaust system. These use fans to move the air around. Each system, as you probably aware, has got a primary fan and an alternate fan, which can be uh, which can be switched by us in the the, the the flight deck there. So it's four fans in total. If um, if anything happens to that flow, the, the, there are low flow sensors, uh, which you can see in the the bottom photograph that that have highlighted there. I think that's the yeah, it's the supply on the left and uh, exhaust on the the, the right. Um, if triggered, these will will sound the the ground crew call horn, which uh, you, you you can sometimes hear, um, and the associated off light illuminates. Um, the the Max has also got an equipment smoke light, which I covered in the Max differences video. So the Th those pipes, th those equipment cooling pipes, I've I've got them all labelled up here in the in the photo on the right. Um, it, it it starts with supply, and in fact starts with 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 fans uh, pushing the air through the the aircraft. Now it splits in two. Um, the, the the long pipe to the left is going off to the flight deck and the and the forward equipment uh, bay. The 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 pipe coming down. Uh, is the supply to the in eBay, and then you've got two more pipes at the bottom of the picture, which are or ducts pipes, whatever you want to call them, which are the exhaust uh, re returns coming coming back. 
and uh, you've got fans at the end of those drawing the air through and the uh, the, the exhaust system that um th there are check valves as well on on all of those fans um the exhaust ducting then go either goes overboard um if if you're on the ground um via the overboard exhaust valve or to the forward cargo hold in flight to provide a little bit of uh, warming in there and uh, th this again is a view from outside um th that actually isn't the overboard exhaust valve that that's that's just the vent from it the the overboard exhaust valve is 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 further up that pipe uh, but nothing will flow out of that 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 pipe or vent if if the overboard exhaust valve is closed um, so I say it, it expels warm um, overboard any warmer that's been used for equipment cooling. It's open on the ground and in flight below two psi. So that, that, that this is that uh, hissing noise that you hear on uh, suddenly start on on approach. That that that's when the uh, when the diff gets down to um, down to below two psi, um, and the air then gets diverted. To uh, or above 2 psi it, it gets diverted to the, the underfloor of the forward cargo hold to give additional heating. Um, this overboard exhaust valve will also open in the smoke removal configuration to, to let smoke out here. Um, that it either uh, happens automatically uh, or on the older aircraft if, the, if either pack switch is in high and the right recirc fan is switched off. Right, batteries. So um, the batteries are located in the in eBay. You can see a photograph of them here. There, there are actually two in this photograph. It's, it's quite hard to tell. Um, you've kind of almost got to count the number of cells back to uh, to work out. But I show you that the, there are two in that photo. So the, the, the main and the auxiliary battery. Uh, and just above those, uh, with the two heavy duty gray cables coming down, that's the battery charger. On the classics, the battery sits on the, the J9 box, uh, which I mentioned in the earlier slide, the, 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 the junction box, but you can actually see it here. Uh, and the reason for that is that, that, that it's, it's to expose the, the, the uh, external DC receptacle. And this is used uh, to plug in an external DC source to, to be able to start the, the APU if the battery is flat. Um, now, this procedure is no longer approved, uh, certainly not for the NG and the Max. And I'm not even sure it's approved on the on the classics anymore because the best advice is if the battery's flat, um, then replace the battery. Um, because if you think about it, the battery charger current could be extremely high um, if if you manage to get the APU running, you know, and a, and, a, and you know, generate an electric source on the aircraft. Uh, but I'm not sure about that. I, I use with caution is what I would say if, if you're going to use uh, external uh, DC power to, to, to start the APU. Um, something probably best only done by engineers in the hangar rather than something that you'd want to do to, to get you flying. Alright, on to the, the, the main uh, the main feature of the E&E Bay, kind of what it's all about really, is the uh, is the racks. Um, so the this diagram here is of the the NG and the Max in eBay. Uh, there are six racks in there, or sometimes five, because the eight actually are optional. Um, and these house the aircraft's computers, controllers, all the digital flight control system, navs and com boxes, um, and all the other electronic equipment. The originals and the classics have only got, uh, well I think the originals only had an E1 and E2 rack, uh, the classics had an E3 as well, um, then the NG and the Max we got the, um, the the 4, the 5 and the 8. So you may be wondering where is the 6 and the 7. The 6 is in the aft cargo hold and I will uh, I will come on to describe that later in the, um, later in this video. The 7, I've never seen anything labelled up as an E7 rack. I don't know. If anybody does know, let me know. Um, but I think it is the auxiliary fuel rack in the, the forward hold, 
which again I, I will show you later on in this video. Um, it, to me it just looks like a rack like any other of these but it doesn't have a number or if it does have a number I haven't seen it. Um, so that that's my hunch on where the, the E7 could be. And the E8 rack, as I've already mentioned, it's optional. Sometimes the components on the E8 rack are are, com are located in the um, where the E6 rack is, but again, I'll uh, I'll come on to those. So, a whole load of racks. Let's have a look at um, uh, uh, what's on them. So, let's start at the beginning with the E1 rack. That's where it is. It's on the the forward wall of the e and eBay, and it's divided into or subdivided into five shelves. So it's the one, one, two, three, four, and five. Um, confusingly numbered right to left rather than left to right. Um, and I guess the logic for that is that um, if you think about it, everything. Uh, this photo's. Um, I imagine it's it, it's because things number from from left to right on the aircraft. You know, engine number one's on the left, engine number two's on the right, that kind of thing. And the same with the wheels and you know what have you. But anyway, whatever reason, there it is. That's their numbering system, and the components are as follows. So starting up in the top left, you got the EGPWS unit. Um, interestingly, with a Made in Indonesia sticker on the on the bottom. I I never knew that till I. I look closely at this this photo. Um, next to it, you got the cabin pressurization controller number two. We got two of these on the uh, on the NG and the Max. Uh, this photo, by the way, is from an NG, a fairly late build NG. Um, some of the others are, are are from a Max, and I'll, I'll point out which ones they are as we go through. This box here is the integrated flight system accessory unit, which um, I I doubt many people will be familiar with um, it's it, it kind of interfaces with the uh, with the digital flight control system um, and it's probably worthy of a, of a video on its own if, if, if I ever get around to it um, I'll, I'll probably come up with something which will uh, which will describe this and the and, and the automatics in in a bit more detail to the side of that you got the flap slat electronic unit and then um, this big unit here is uh, that's one of the two flight control computers that's FCCA uh, so that's hugely important um, to the side of it and surprisingly large footprint in my opinion is the uh, the TCAS computer um, I've, I am surprised that is so big but uh, but there we go moving down to the uh, the E2 rack um, so what I'm showing you there is a gap and in fact, there are there are four gaps uh, on on this particular aircraft, um, and that's because this one's got um, the MMR, the the multi-mode receiver. So on aircraft without an MMR, you would find DME one in there, um, but this one's got an MMR, so we got an MMR instead. Transponder one it lives there. Um, and in that gap will be VOR uh, um, um, VOR one and the, the the mark. But again, this is combined in the uh, in the MMR. Incidentally, on the uh, on the Max, which of course all have uh, MMRs, I think. Um, I'm, I don't think that's cust customer option. Um, the the weather radar is here. Uh, it was moved out of the forward equipment bay because that shrank due to the um, the, the length and nose gear on the Mac. So uh, that's where you'll find the weather radar. That uh, just slightly out of shot, but don't worry. There's a there's a second one that I can show you later. That is the MMR. Over on the E13, we got the anti skid and auto brake control unit. The, the PA, passenger address, amplifier, and VHF1. Um, probably worthy of mention perhaps to the, to the new guys coming on to the, 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 the 7.3 or, um, or guys new to, new to airliners. Um, you, you may be surprised to see things like VHF1 down here and uh, DME1, uh, NAV1 or, or, or or, or one, two, or whatever it might be, uh, you may have been forgiven for thinking that they were located in the flight deck, on the uh, on the central electrics panel between the you know between the captain and the FO. 
those boxes up there in the flight deck that you tune the frequency in with, they are um, really just radio tuning panels. They you you simply set the frequency or switch between boxes up there, um, and you're then sending a signal down to this box here. This is the actual tuner that that you're looking at now. Um, and from here, the, the 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 cabling comes out to the the antenna, which is actually to the left of the picture. That that's what all those connectors are there. So the the, the actual radio units themselves, be be you know, the VOR or VHF or whatever it might be, they are located down here in the in eBay. Uh, on the E14, we would have VOR two. Um, but again, that's in MMR2, and there you go. That's that's a good look at uh, an MMR. Um, very unremarkable looking thing. Very anonymous looking. Not a lot to see. Um, it, it's got a test button on the front for and a couple of lights, and and that's it. And the big one next to it is uh, FCCB. Over on the E15, VHF2, and the uh, transponder number 2. So that's it for the E1 rack. Uh, oh, DME2 would live there. Uh, if we have a look at E2, which is squeezed all the way over there in the, um, the corner. The, the, this is on the aft wall, and uh, it's to the side of the, the, the E3 rack. So the E2, E3, E4 all sit side by side on the aft wall. So let's take a look at these components in, in detail. We got the window heat control units, uh, your front left and uh, front left and right, uh, and sorry, and right side. Generator control units, uh, the APU Jenny control unit on the left there, and I think that's engine one on the right. Engine number two will be somewhere else. Uh, transformer rectifier one. And the main battery charger there. So, say so the, the the one we're looking at in the other picture, I think was uh, I think that was the auxiliary battery charger. Engine APU fire detection unit here. Cabin pressure controller number one. Remember, we got two of those. Uh, and this big thing is the APU star converter unit. Um, big unit has to carry a lot of power. Static converters here. The APU start power unit, and down at the bottom there, the power distribution panel. And this is for side one of the electrics. There are two of these. There's uh, the, the, there's one over on the E4 uh, rack for for side two. So the, the things on here, if if you you know just reading it, it's DC bus one, AC transfer bus one, main bus one. So the one on the other side will, will be DC bus two, transfer bus two, main bus two, and and etc. The E3 rack. Um, so this is in the the, the centre of the the aft wall between the E2 and the E4 racks, and we've got the the DUs up there, displayed electronic units one and two side by side. ADF one, RADALT one, RADALT two. The digital flight data acquisition unit is here. The engine vibration signal conditioner, which I think I mentioned in the, the power plant video. Uh, engine accessory unit. Um, gap here, th th this is where the audio entertainment player will be located. Again, customer option for, for, for this. Um, th this can live in one of several places and, uh, and that's, that's one of the options there. And the SMIDs, the SMIDs 1 and 2 are, uh, are located there. Down the bottom, you got the zone temperature controllers one and two, the the wireless QAR quick access recorder there, and you can actually see the the, the little uh, um, antenna on it for um, to, to to send things back wirelessly. BHF three, and the uh, the auxiliary battery charger there. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think I'm pretty sure that this panel. The, the, this rack is from a uh, from a Max. Um, I'm using a mixture of of Max and NG um, photos for, for, to to show these racks because um, some I I 
I took better photos than others. I mean, it's it, it's a very difficult combined confined space to take photos of. So some came out better than others. So I've just used the the the, the best ones where I can. Um, but to be honest, there's very very little difference between the the NG and the Max, and I'm I'm, I'm pointing out those few differences where, where 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 there are as as I'm going along. And that just down below there is the uh, the auxiliary battery. The E4 rack, so just next to the E3 rack, is uh, there, and I'm pretty sure this one is a Max. Um, so you've got air conditioning relays 1 and 2, the remote electronic unit, cell calls there, the ACARS CMU box, VOR2 uh, stroke marker. Uh, so yeah, this and I, I think this is a non MMR aircraft, so yeah, th this one actually is a Max. Head of guidance computer. Uh, again, customer option for those that've got, have, uh, got the luxury of having one of those fitted. Network file server. Yes, yeah, so this is definitely a Max. Uh, window heat controller number four. That's uh, front right. Again, there are four of these units dotted around the ENE bay. Uh, transformer rectifiers two and three. Bus power control unit and the Jenny uh, power control unit, and down below this is the other power distribution panel. This this is for uh, for side two. So you got DC bus two, transfer bus two, external uh, external power, and and you know various others on on side two of the of the electrics. The E5 rack is on the side wall. It's only quite a small rack. This, this, so this, this is the opposite side from the air stairs, because obviously all the air stairs uh, equipment will be, um, well, wouldn't enable you to put anything on that side. So, so this is beneath door one right, and um, I say not very many components here. But you've got the the ISFD battery charger there, so the the integrated standby uh, flight director battery charger for that. Uh, ADIRU number 2, FMC 2, uh, the transfer relays be between the FMCs 1 and 2 and there is FMC 1 next to it and ADIRU 1. So uh, so all the all the sort of the automatics if you like are, are all there on the the E52 rack. The eight rack, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a photo of it, but there in the in the red box, that's where it would be. J just sits above the E five rack. Um, this would hold the media file servers and video system controller, uh, but in actual fact, on the I will show you a photo uh, soon of the the E six rack, which which shows where where those will will be. Okay, that was the components in detail. Let's have let's put that into context now with a with a little look around the the in eBay uh, with video. So starting off with the uh, the E five two, th this is I say uh, on the opposite side from the Airsters. You've got the, the FMCs there and the ADI or U's. Moving round, you've got all the air conditioning, uh, the, the equipment cooling, um, supply and exhaust ducting there. Is the E4 rack uh, panning across now to uh, to the E3? Got uh, DUs up at the top, batteries down at the bottom, and the battery charger just above. That's your service panel on the left-hand side. Again, just uh, moving round to the the right to the. E2 panel now. All the heavy duty APU start components are there, and uh, one of the power, well, the other power distribution panel for the for the number one side. That's a sort of close up of that. Moving rounds to where the airstairs would be, and the J23 junction box is there. So say that space is where all the, the air stairs door equipment would be. On this side we got the the one rack, the one that's subdivided into five sections. So the flight control computer array is up there, uh, the top centre picture. 
uh, TCAS computer to the side of it, and these are all the uh, the avionics. Next for here, I've had to uh, move away the the the, the 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 track that the door travels along to to expose the components at the bottom on the uh, on the E14 panel. So uh, looking at that, looks like it's a, a non-MMR aircraft because there are no gaps in the avionics there. And then back up, uh, got the network file server on the left, the, the FMCs and the ADI I use again. Okay, so onto this, uh, the, the other rack, the, the E6 rack. Now, this is located in the aft cargo hold. Um, and essentially, it's, 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 it's now become an E&E overflow. Um, but originally, what, what was here was the uh, was the CVR um, now where, once they put one component in I, I guess they the, the logic was well there, there's a bit of space we can put some more stuff in it um, so the components which are in here are generally those which have got some reason to be near the back so the CVR is back there for survivability uh, the, 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 the APU controller there to be near the APU and the HFs are, are there to be near the antenna um, there's also a moisture shroud uh, over this rack as well uh, to again you know for, for the same reasons there are in the main E&E bay so starting at the top, you got the E61 rack uh, up there. Now it's empty in this photo, but again, you, you, on that you can have some some aircraft. I've seen the CVR up there. Some have got the media file server and video system controller. If it's not on the uh, on the E8 rack, below that you've got the HF1 and 2. Um, on the classics, the the these are in the E bay, but uh, the, the they got moved out to to this location for the for the NG and the Max, and uh, down at the bottom that's the APU electronic control unit. Uh, this was also in the E bay on the classics, and and again got got moved back here, you know, just just for overflow on the the NG and the Max. Now if you look just there in the in the circle. Uh, is uh, d don't open the the, the lettering on the uh, on the CVR and you can uh, so it's it's actually in this particular aircraft back there behind the um, behind the HF um, but yeah so sometimes it's it, it's more more prominent and more visible as in this one so the, the, the this was quite an early um, uh, NG and the all you've got there is is the CVR and the uh, and the APU um, ECU electronic control unit. All right, onto the auxiliary fuel equipment rack. Um, probably not many of you have seen this unless you're flying BBJs. Um, so this is in the forward cargo hold up up against the uh, the, the forward bulkhead so it's actually directly behind the in eBay um, you know it's it, it's it's only centimeters from the in eBay you know uh, uh, f physically um, it's on these racks you've got the auxiliary fuel processor unit auxiliary fuel control unit and isolation unit um, or or auxiliary fuel isolation unit number three one and two are actually elsewhere they're they're, they're in elsewhere in the holds uh, I'll say my theory is that is that this is or, or, or was the the missing e7 rack but uh, but who knows the forward equipment bay um, now this is the little hatch which is located forward of the nose the the, the, the nose wheel main components inside this are the uh, the PSEU which uh, I did a whole video about uh, the fuel quantity processor unit and the weather radar, uh, although not on the Max um, because they 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 ran out of room, so that's gone back into the uh, the in eBay. Again, just a reminder: if this hatch is opened, it'll also bring on the equipment light on the the doors panel. So it's either this hatch or the in eBay hatch. Both bring on the equipment light. So looking up there. Um, the components in green that you see up at the top are the underside of the two control columns. 
Um, I've covered those at length in the in the flight controls modules. You've got the PSEU on the left of the picture and the fuel quantity processing unit on the right of the picture. The light switch is uh, is just marked there in the red circle under the weather radar rack, and uh, you can see the weather radar just above, and the the the, the chain um, is actually from the, the 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 stab trim wheel. So you've got this direct chain linkage from the stab trim wheel, um, which partly explains the, the the rattling you hear when the when the stab wheel the stab trim wheel moves. Um, and that is uh, connected by gears to, to the drum to its left, which has got the cables on it, which go all the way down to the, the tail of the aircraft to, to move the, the stabilizer. This photo um, I took quite a while ago, um, but this is from a, not as long ago as, as, as the aircraft is old, this is from a 1969 vintage 737-200. Um, very early build and I've included this just to show you that nothing has really changed um, this is a similar photo it's not the identical angle unfortunately I, c I couldn't quite get that um, but it's very very close um, so the rack is the same the light switch is the same the weather radar it's changed units um, I think this is now a Rockwell Collins one, um, whereas the other one with um, I think it was an RCA, I can't remember, um, but it's there in the same place, and the the chain and drum are hidden by that white shroud ju just for their protection, uh, so they're there. You just can't see them in the picture, um, but otherwise it's it's identical. And I, I I think that's a remarkable testimony to the to the design of the aircraft. Um, that you know, really, nothing's had to change in um, in you know in 50 years. You know, they that they got it right. I mean, obviously, there there've been tweaks and refinements made over the years, um, and and you've now got something with you know a product with with 50 years of of design improvements in it, uh, which which I I think is wonderful. So just looking at a couple couple more components in there. Um, the equipment cooling supply and exhaust low flow sensors are in there for the uh, for the forward avionics. Uh, fuel quantity processor unit up there in the top right. A data module. Uh, you'll see reference to that in the in the FCOMs. These are the things which convert the the, the PETA static uh, signals or the the air pressure from 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 your pitos into an electric signal for the uh, for the ADI I use that's that's what happens there so the, on the other side of the wall from that will will be uh, you know what, a, one of the probes and then the weather radar down there in the uh, in the bottom right so once again let's have a look at a, uh, a video uh, tour if you like of the uh, of the Ford equipment bay. Again, getting into it, it's uh, the hatch operates the the, the same for, for opening as the uh, as the main E&E bay, but it, it just folds up onto one side, so it doesn't slide away anywhere because there's no room to uh, to slide it. To be honest, a little catch on the right hand side there just to to hold it in position. There we got the PSEU, and uh, so just moving round to find the light switch. Let's put that on there. So lights lights are now on see what we're doing and um, on this side we'll start with the, the the fuel quantity processor unit again I cover this in in some depth in the the, the fuel module a uh, lot of a lot of wiring in and out of uh, of this from all the um, all the tank units and uh, uh, capacitors and the like so that's where that lives a lot of ducting in the uh, in this Ford avionics bay uh, for for equipment cooling. Up here we've got the uh, the components hanging down from the uh, from the flight controls, from the um, the control columns and, uh, and and rudder pedals and the like. Again, more uh, more 
cooling uh, supply and exhaust ducting visible here. This the in the, in the shot now. That's, that's one of the air data modules from the Peter Statics. Uh, just trying to get my way past the the weather radar there. Looking up toward the uh, the ceiling. Uh, the white thing on the right, that's the, the shroud, the safety shroud, the, the, the protective shroud that just covers the, um, the, the the stab trim wheel. So this is the weather radar unit, and so Rockwell Collins on, on this particular aircraft. Um, customer option, which one you have. And that's your stab trim uh, drum and, uh, and chain connection up to the stab trim wheel. Looking forward there, we've got the, uh, the ducting for some cooling uh, air that goes up into the flight deck. Around the side, lots of wiring looms, lots of um, cable runs from the, uh, from the flight controls, some field springs up there as well. That's one of the uh, equipment cooling supply low flow detectors uh, on the right, the circular thing, then the air data module to the left of the PSU, and this is the PSU itself. With uh, with a bike checking fr function on the on the front. Okay, and a last little look around at the um, at the cable runs and linkages. Release the, the catch to close the door. Pull it down. Don't forget to switch the light off. And um, and lock up. A little half turn to lock. Again, you can see the drain holes there. Okay, we'll just finish off uh, looking at a little bit of um, bite testing. Um, now, <laughs> again, E and O E. Um, th th this is not me daring to 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 teach or instruct or or advise or or recommend anybody to do by testing. Um, if 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 your air crew don't do this, all right. It it's it's just me giving you background knowledge. Um, as to be honest, is is all of this this particular video on the e and eBay. I mean, there's there's no real reason uh, for, for pilots to, to ever go in there, see it, know what's in. But, you know, as a pilot, I, I feel it's, it's very useful background knowledge to, to know what's going on on the aircraft. And, and this really I, I, I offer you in the, in the same vein as that. Um, if you know, you know, kind of what the engineers can and can't do, it, 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 it may help. Um, it's it, it's all good background knowledge. So um, bite testing. Um, bite stands for built-in test equipment, and all of those boxes you've seen of, of, of or most of those boxes you, you you've seen in the in eBay have have, have got um, some form of, of of test facility on on the front of the panel, just so they can be interrogated without. Because otherwise, the option is if if the the faults believed to be in the box. Uh, the option is that the engineers have to take out the box, replace it with another one, and send the the defective one off for, for refurbishment, which is, you know, a long and expensive process. So if if faults can be identified uh, here, then then so much the better. Um, so what we're looking at is the is is the, is the front of a standard Boeing uh, LRU line replacement unit. It's it's used on the SMIDs, the cabin pressure controllers, the flat flat electronic unit on the um, on the NGs and the Max. On the classics, you see these on the uh, the storm management computer, the yaw damper coupler, cabin pressure controller, and the uh, the leading edge flap slat indication module. So the, the, there are quite a few with this same uh, bite test panel on it. On this unit, there's a there's a decal on the side, the right hand side there, gives a little aid memoir for how to do a bite test, and uh, and a list of the menu items. And uh, and again, please don't think I'm giving anybody the green light to go um, looking in the in eBay and playing around doing bite tests. Please don't. Um, the, the the engineers have to follow a a, a prescribed process in the uh, in the maintenance manual before before doing this procedure. Um, now, 
whilst that was one by test panel that, that we saw in the previous slide, th there are actually many, many different ones. Um, and that's because the, these LRUs are, uh, come from different manufacturers. Uh, they're also different ages, you know, f from when they were first designed or, or modified or what have you. And they've got different functionality, so different information needs to be Im imparted uh, on, on the bike test. And they, they range from basically simple status lights, um, like, like you can see uh, down in the bottom center there, where, where, where there's a test button and just two little red LED lights above it. Through to things which look quite horrendous, like uh, just to the left of it, the, those two boxes there on the, um, uh, on the zone temperature uh, computers. Um, and there's a whole spectrum of, of things in between. Um, and they, as I say, they, they, they can just be either giving status lights to, to full diagnostic checks, uh, and, and they'll even give you fault codes and direct you where to go in, in the manual and what steps to take. So let's, um, let's just look at one example. Um, this is a, 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 an FSCU. Um, so when it, when you run the test, if if a, fel a fault is found, um, or even in fact if the fault is no longer present, but it 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 it, it actually stores it in in, in memory, um, and the unit can display it for you, um, either in plain English or with a fault code w w when you interrogate and, and go in to look at the fault history. Um, I think this one was actually one for discovered in fault history. Uh, in this example, we, 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 it, it, it actually says in the left-hand image there, right 28 volt AC uh, flap excitation voltage uh, problem. You go into, uh, if you press the the, um, the, the, the button again, it, it switches to a message number. So we got, we got a message number there, 27. That means it's in ATA chapter 27, which means it's to do with flight controls, and a number there, 53280. So what the engineer will do is he will make a note of that that number, go into the, 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 the fault isolation manual, and that will tell him step by step what to do next, what, what you know, where, where to troubleshoot, where, where, to, where to look, what, what, what steps to take. So, uh, so that's it. Let's let's have a look at this in action. So we'll start by switching the unit on, and it's asking you uh, for any existing faults. Yes, you say. So um, it starts running the test. Uh, wait a while. It says no faults. Happy days. Uh, scroll down and uh, go onto the menu. Uh, existing faults are none, so we can get rid of that. But we can go to the the, um, the fault history. It's asking you, you know, which leg, so last leg, and there's the fault. It's the one we covered in the, the previous slide. Ask it for details, and it gives you the, the reference number to go into the, uh, the fault isolation manual. Uh, the fault's intermittent or, or inactive now, because we found it in the fault history. And uh, if we want, we can go look at different legs, uh, going back at least, uh, you know, ten, 10 sectors. But the, there's only that one fault in, in here at the moment. Uh, so put that away, display off, job done. So that's it for the in eBay, um, and indeed the, the Ford equipment and, uh, and all the other racks and electronic components. Um, if you, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, and, um, and tell your colleagues. Um, as a reminder, I uh, I do have a book out on the on the seven three seven, which which includes a lot, a, a huge amount of the uh, of the information given in these videos. Thanks for watching.